All right, this is real quick. This is the X14 Fostex 4-track recorder. It uses the old cassette tapes here. Now, what you've got is your four tracks. One here, one, two, three, and four. These are your balance controls for each of the tracks. Turning it this way is for the left side of your output, and this is for your right. So you can create stereotype images, but typically you just want to keep them in the center so that you hear the sound on both speakers equally. Um, there's this record select button here, which cycles through the four tracks you want to record to. So you go here, that's for to record to track one, two, three, four. And you hit it again, it goes away. One, two, three, three, like that, okay? Um, so let's see what else we got. Of course, your typical play controls. You get record button and your play button, rewind, fast forward, stop, pause, etc. Your inputs down below here, you've got two choices for plugging things in. You can either go through a microphone plug, which has a volume control for input, and then you also have, um, here you can see that there's this regular line in from a guitar amp, which doesn't have any kind of individual volume control. So you typically are going to find that um, you're going to be able to, you're going to want to be able to control how much sound you put into it from something outside, but uh, we're going to use the microphone for this just because it'll help us quickly adjust volumes coming from our source instrument, which is going to be this, uh, this is a um, Yamaha TX7, it's an old synthesizer, and I will be doing some MIDI arpeggiation from the MIDI PAL device over here, and I will be controlling it from this MIDI keyboard, which is all going through this MIDI timepiece which is sort of a patch bay for MIDI. And so, let's just uh, get things going here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a track we want to record to. In this case, we want to record to track one. And we will go ahead and hit record. Well, actually, before we do that, let's do this real fast. You can see that I've got something, I've got the guitar plugged into it, or the uh, synth already plugged into it. And you can see that the signal meter right there. What you want to be careful of when you're recording is you want to hit the red, but you don't want to hit it too hard because what happens is too much signal will cause the signal to distort, but too little signal will be so quiet that when you turn it up to hear it, you'll hear lots of tape hiss and background noise. So you really want to try and find that fine line of, uh, you know, you want to see it definitely hit the red like that, but just be careful about too much because it can cause distortion that you don't want necessarily in a song. So, let's stop it again. Now I'm going to hit record. All right. Wait a few seconds to be sure to give the tape a chance to see the actual uh, sort of dark gray brown material start wrapping around the wheel. Therefore, it's ready to record. There's about a five second space on cassette tapes that is silence that won't record anything. So let's hit record now. Let's start playing something. Oh, there's that shit there, huh? a few times to just get something down there. There's also a little tape counter which gives you an idea of um, where you are at on the timeline. It's not super precise but it definitely gives you a ballpark if you want to fast forward or rewind to a certain point. Alright, that's pretty good. So hit stop. And we want to rewind it. Okay, this time we're going to be moving on to the next track which is track two. And we're going to turn the volume of our playback. This is the volume of the playback, uh, the playback volume of each track. So now that we've recorded what we want into this first track, we're going to turn it up so we can hear it when we play it back. And we need to pick a different sound now so we can differentiate them better. Let's turn off, uh, actually, turn off the arpeggio. Okay. <laughs> This is probably going to be very musically pretty in terms of harmonies, but it's going to give you an idea of how this stuff all works together. So you can hear each distinct instrument simultaneously that you lay down one after another. So we hit record now that we know on track two is ready. Okay. And you might be able to hear it in the video, but you hear the hiss. That's the tape hiss. And the stronger the signal is, the more that tape hiss can be, is not heard because the signal itself is strong enough to be heard over the hiss. So, see. So that's our recording. Okay? 
So now we're recording the new track right now, so let's lay something on top of this. an old song on top of that so uh, what you were hearing there was actually leftovers from a previous test song so we'll see how this plays out I did a test song last night to make sure it works and I'm not gonna erase all of it uh, so here we go so we're on now we move on to track three and we're gonna pick a new sound oh, that's a crazy sound look at that like a uh, percussive thing or something so we move to track three Hit record. We can turn up the volume of that track and this one now. And we are currently recording now, so it's playing back. We'll start hearing the other two pieces, and once I hear both of those, I'll start laying down the third part. Last track. All right, we're gonna turn the volume of that one right there, and we got this guy going. Hit record again, and now we'll pick a different cloud. Let's do that cloud sound. It's a little high pitch, clicking sound. There you are. Okay. I'll start this one a little faster on top of the other. That's still on, but it's okay for playback. Just hit play. And you can hear everything. So also you keep in mind that this is where the audio is coming out from this unit. You have to find a stereo that has auxiliary input or something to allow you to hear the sound. And just to play with the panning a little bit, you might not pick it up on the video, but I'm going to do some panning right and left to put everything over. And now when you play, you can actually hear certain sounds only coming out of the left speaker and some sounds coming out of the right speaker. And of course, this was the other track I was playing before. I was recording last night. That's it. That's pretty much how it works. It's that simple. And you just basically can use these cassettes. If you buy cassette tapes, um, I would recommend you get 60 minute or less tapes because the bigger tapes might record for longer periods of time, but they are also harder on the engine and the motor inside your tape player. So for better life, you know, of your hardware, you want to use tapes that are easier on the motor. And that's basically it. Um, you can just basically pop a cassette tape out, buy another one, or you know, replace it. You can have multiple songs on one tape. You cannot flip it over, though, because remember, that what happens is uh, an old school cassette actually used left and right and left and right for side A and side B. And in this case, it's using all four tracks at one time, so it covers the entire tape. So if you put this on, play it backwards. Play this part real fast. Let's see Here we'll do some crazy back masking. This is kind of a fun thing you can do. Because we're now listening to all four tracks backwards. And 
And if you get really clever and creative, you can actually mix both forward recording and backwards recording. Um, so there's a lot of fun you can have with this. And this is a great way to understand the principles of recording and how it works and build your way up from there. Hope you enjoy it.